at Shea Stadium in New York City, two good old boys from Alabama got together and talked about the good old days at Tuscaloosa with the Bear. The Raiders' Ken Stabler explained away the seven interceptions he threw one week ago against the Broncos, and Richard Todd talked about the growing pains of his up-and-coming Jets. Richard Todd is the latest in a storied line of quarterbacks that traveled the underground railway up north to the big dollars and the pros. He has finally crept out of the large shadow cast by Joe Namath and is establishing himself as a first-rate quarterback in the near future. While his team is young and green as their jerseys, the Oakland Raiders, constructed by master builder Al Davis, are deep and experienced and probably the best team in pro football. Davis, along with head coach John Madden, needed an emotional rebound after their crushing loss to the Denver Broncos. In seasons past, the Jets used to provide teams with instant euphoria and quick and easy victories. That no longer is the case, and Madden knew that Oakland would have to establish their dominance early to sink the buoyant hopes of the Jets. On their first possession, the Raiders unlimbered their muscles and shoved the ball down the Jets' collective throat. Led by number 30, Mark Van Egan, Oakland dominated the line of scrimmage. Everyone knows that the Raiders run left behind the blocking of Gene Upshaw on Art Shell but no one seems to be able to do anything about it. With Van Egan blasting for steady, if unspectacular gains, the Raiders reach the three-yard line. From there, they influence the Jets' secondary to scatter like leaves in the wind, and Oakland raked in the game's first touchdown. The 72-yard march was a classic example of playbook to playing field execution, and the silver and black looked like they had regained the rhapsody of easy victory. However, on the next series, the Jets found large air pockets in the Raiders' secondary. Richard Todd connected with number 83, Jerome Barkham, for 37 yards. Then New York's offensive line established that they were not overmatched physically. Behind solid protection, Todd found Barkham at the flag, and the game was tied at seven. This season, Barkham was switched from wide receiver to tight end to take advantage of the superior blocking he provides at that position. Barkham has blocked effectively, with no noticeable drop-off in his effectiveness as a receiver. Markham's emergence at tight end, the recovery from injury by lean and talented Richard Castor, and the long-range threat provided by rookie Wesley Walker give the Jets a core of receivers that might, in time, equal any in the league. With touchdowns scored on the game's first two possessions, defense was a dying art that was finally put to rest by Ken Stabler. The snake attacked the perimeters of the Jets' defense with sideline passes to his receivers and quick screens to his running backs. All good quarterbacks take what is given them. Obviously, the Jets were stacking to the inside and surrendering the sidelines. When Stabler went for six, he was momentarily denied by blanket coverage by number 38, Ed Taylor, on Cliff Branch. Taylor's brilliant play could not deny the inevitable as Stabler cut through the heart of the zone with an arrow to tight end Dave Casper, number 87. 
It was goodbye Stone Age, hello to Space Age football. In three possessions, there had been three touchdowns, and Oakland led 14 to 7. Could it continue? You bet it could. This time, it took just one transcontinental heave by Richard Todd. The game's fourth touchdown, an 87-yard beauty to Wesley Walker, number 85, did not tie the game as New York missed the extra point, a mistake they would rue all afternoon. One mistake New York did not make was drafting Wesley Walker, the rookie flyer from the University of California. Walker has had a nasty habit of dropping uncontested touchdown passes ever since the exhibition season began. But since he always seems able to blaze pass coverage, the law of averages may balance out in his favor. In the second period, with the Raiders leading 14 to 13, Stabler stuck with a strategy of throwing underneath the jet zone. New York's secondary and linebacking core is young and suspect, and it seemed only Raider mistakes would deny them a field day. Twice, the Jets loop their tackles and ends to sack Stabler in the first half. This denied momentum to Oakland, and Richard Todd took full advantage of the sudden change in fortunes. A nifty 52-yard catch by Walker was back with a touchdown pass thrown to the post to Richard Castor. Caster's touchdown reclaimed the lead for the Jets 20 to 14. And the Raider defense, which had looked unconquerable in the preseason and early on in the championship schedule, now appeared to be failingly mortal. With five minutes to play in the half, both teams traded turnovers. John Ebersole intercepted one pass for New York, and number 20, Neil Colsey, stole one for the Raiders. The Jets entertained no thoughts of padding their lead before halftime until Bruce Harper, number 42, a rookie from Kutztown State, fielded a Ray Guy punt and returned it to the New York 42. Todd found Walker floating fancy free in the Oakland secondary. The rookie's third catch gave him an astounding 160 yards receiving in the first half alone. The second year quarterback used the sideline to save seconds off the clock. And with less than a minute and a half to play, both teams appeared a bit testy. With 50 seconds remaining, Todd found running back Clark Gaines, number 21, at the Raider 20-yard line. Then with it second and 10 from the 14, Todd rolled out of the pocket and patiently sought out and found Gaines alone in the end zone. Halftime, the surprising Jets held a 27 to 14 lead. In the battle of good old boy quarterbacks, Richard Todd had a game's worth of statistics as he completed 12 of 17 passes for 271 yards and four touchdowns. But as Jet fans well knew, you do not beat the world champion Oakland Raiders with one half of football. Still, the omens seem solidly in their favor.
With a halftime score of 27 to 14, John Madden's Raiders regrouped in an effort to avoid a second straight upset defeat. But on the Jets' first offensive series, Richard Todd came out throwing some more. And it was deja vu for Oakland, who used to suffer the same fate at the hands of a Jet named Namath. But after Broadway Joe, er, Richard Todd hit Rich Caster for 30 yards, he in turn was hit by Pat Toomey, number 67, and coughed up the football. John Matusak won the race for the pigskin, and Oakland had possession on their own 48. But two plays later, the fourth turnover of this game occurred when tight end Dave Casper took a stabler pass, then was sandwiched by two Jets at the New York 40. John Ebersole was the recipient of this gift, and Todd quickly improved on it by passing to Wesley Walker over the middle for 18 yards. Now from the Raider 40, the third successive turnover in the half occurred when Todd laid one up that was fielded by Neil Colsey on the Oakland five-yard line, where he was tackled by the Jets' Walker. It was a bit of vindication for Colsey, who had been beaten by Walker on the previous play. The former Ohio State star was playing in place of George Atkinson, who has a broken ring finger. Oakland had the ball, but their offense had their backs to their own end zone from their five-yard line, and the fired-up jet defense kept them there. Stabler ran three straight running plays that gained a net of only three yards as Neal, Keller, Salam, and especially middle linebacker Greg Buttle, number 51, stonewalled the Raiders' ground game. Buttle is a youngster, fast-gaining recognition as one of the hardest-hitting linebackers in the game. And only in his second season, he has become the leader of Walt Michaels' defense. Their strong effort had forced Oakland to punt from their own end zone and gave New York good field position and Raider real estate, position which was quickly improved upon by the Jets' offense when Todd screened over the heads of Raider linemen to Clark Gaines, who, with an able escort from number 65 Joe Fields, gained 15 yards to the Oakland 20. But here Oakland got tough. Number 58, Monty Johnson, twice knifing through to throw Kevin Long for losses. And the Jets called upon Pat Leahy for a 32-yard field goal attempt. Leahy's boot was wide to the left, and New York had missed out on an excellent opportunity to pad their 13-point lead. After the game, John Madden remarked, this reminded me of an old-time AFL shootout up and down the field all day. On the Raiders' possession after the missed field goal, Oakland indeed stormed right up the field against the Jets' defense, and they did it on the accurate left arm of Ken Stabler. On the next play, the first of the fourth quarter was down and out to Siani, who twisting and turning broke two tackles for 14 yards. Then from the New York 28, Stabler pumped faked, then found Casper who took the ball to the Jets' 10. Two plays later, a square out by Bolitnikov was good for the touchdown. Another look at the scoring play shows the Oakland offensive line at its finest. Nary a green jersey popped through as Stabler patiently waited for his favorite receiver to come open and hit him when he did. After the extra point, Oakland trailed by only 6, 27 to 21. New York's next series seemingly ended on a punt when Chuck Ramsey's 39-yard kick was burned back by Neil Colsey for 43 yards.
Colsey's disgust was caused by the sight of a flag on the field. Illegal blocking by the Raiders and New York had the ball back at their own 23. On the first play, Todd took a long drop and it was bombs away again. Fifty-eight yards later, Richard Castor was wrestled to the ground, and with the ball now on the Oakland 10, it was another golden opportunity for the Jets to increase their lead. But to the consternation of the New York fans, the Jets, who all day excelled at the big play, failed in four tries from in close. Finally, it was again left to Leahy, this time a kick of 26 yards, the kind he could make with his eyes closed, he said later. But now with both eyes on the goalposts, Leahy saw he was wide again, and the Jets' great chance was over. Two missed field goals and an extra point chalked up to their kicker. I was pressing, that's all, Leahy said. We all have our bad days. Oakland had a new life and seized the opportunity. They came roaring upfield on the arm of Stabler and the hands of Mike Ciani, playing in place of the injured Cliff Branch. Ciani, a New Jersey native with a rare chance to play in front of friends and relatives, made two consecutive receptions. Then Stabler faked right and threw left to Casper, who made his seventh catch of the day at the Jet 25. Three plays and one yard later, the snake laid up a beauty to Ciani in the end zone and the Raiders were tied with the Jets at 27. This was a big day for the sixth year veteran from Villanova. For Ciani has been unhappy about the amount of playing time he's been getting. Today, with Branch on the bench, Ciani was making the most of his chance. The vital placement by Errol Mann was good, and the Raiders were back on top for the first time since the first quarter. Having seen a large lead disappear, Richard Todd didn't lose his poise. On the next series with Oakland in the prevent, which had six men in the secondary, he put up a beauty to Barkham for 46 long yards. On number 37, Lester Hayes' protestations were heated. Barkham was called for offensive pass interference and the New York threat died. Oakland's strategy through much of the second half was to abandon the 3-4 on passing downs. They went with six men in the defensive backfield to thwart Todd. When the Oakland defense came off the field, the fortunes of the game were left squarely up to the Raider attack. As Madden exhorted his offense, nothing fancy now, just hang on to the ball. Oakland hung on to it with a withering ground game that ate up the remaining six minutes and 11 seconds of the ball game. Oakland's defense only had to sit back and watch with admiration as Stabler, even when faced with a third down consultation with his coach, was smilingly confident that the Jets would never see the ball again. Twice on crucial third down situations, Oakland converted on the hard running of Mark Van Egan, who carried 10 times on this one final and crucial offensive drive. Finally on fourth down, Arrow Mann was called upon to salt the game away. But New York, in its eagerness to force a fumble, ran into the kicker and the Raiders retained possession. This was the final blow against the Jets as the clock ran out on their chances for a major upset. But though New York lost a football game, they won the hearts of their first sellout crowd in more than a year. And against the world champions, no less, a bold young bomber named Richard Todd came of age by throwing for nearly 400 yards and four touchdown passes and firmly entrenched himself as a worthy successor to Joe Namath. 
The result, though, was a Raider comeback for a one-point victory, stirring entertainment on a beautiful autumn afternoon.